In the previous video, we focused on setting up our Flask app and configuring the backend. If you would like to have the full code, you can find the link to our public GitHub repository in the description. Now, let's move on to the front end beginning with the homepage of our proposed ESRJC alumni portal. This first file is index.html. Let's explore the header and footer sections within the index.html and how they are styled for consistency across the various pages of the portal. These sections are integral to ensuring a uniform user experience throughout the alumni portal. Here's a look at these elements and their corresponding CSS. So for the first part, head, this tag encapsulates all the metadata needed for the document that isn't displayed directly on the web page. Next, for the meta charset UTF-8, this tag specifies the character encoding for the HTML document. UTF-8 is a character encoding capable of encoding all possible characters in Unicode and is commonly used to ensure that all characters on the web page display correctly, regardless of the user system. Next, this meta tag is used to control the viewport size and scale on mobile devices. The width equals to device width instructs the page to match the screen's width in a device-independent pixels. Initial scale equals to 1.0 sets the initial zoom level when the page is first loaded by the browser. Next, the title tag defines the title of the document, which is shown in the browser's title bar or in the pages tab. It is used by search engines and browsers to display the page in search results and browser history. For the link tag, it links an external CSS file to the HTML document. The well equals to style sheet attribute specifies the relationship between the current document and the link file that is of a style sheet. The href attribute specifies the path to the CSS file that styles elements within the web page. Finally, this last line closes the head section of the HTML document. After this tag, the body section typically begins, where the content visible to users on the web page is placed. These lines in the head section are crucial as they ensure that the document is correctly formatted and styled, making it functional and accessible across various devices and browsers. Next, we move on to the body and the headers. So, the header section in the HTML provides a navigation menu and branding elements like the logo and the portal title. Let's start the live coding for this part. So for the initial body tag, it encloses all the content that appears on the web page. It's where you place all the HTML that should be rendered by the browser, including text, images, links, and more. Anything you want the users to see and interact with on the web page should be inside this tag. For this next line, this line marks the start of a division or a section in a HTML document. The div tag itself is a generic container with no specific semantic meaning but is commonly used for styling or grouping elements. The class equals the container attribute assigns the container class to the div. This class can be used to style the div using CSS, usually to give it a certain width, padding, margin, or other styles. In the context of a responsive web design, this container class is often styled to have a max width and a margin set to auto on the sides to center it on the page, making it adapt to different screen sizes neatly. We then start with the header, which represents the header section of the web page, typically containing introductory content or navigational links. Next, the class header content is used to apply specific styles, which we will show in the style sheet shortly. Next, the IMG part embeds an image into the document at the specified SKRC location. Alt equals to ASRJC logo provides alternative information for an image if a user for some reason cannot view it. Style equals to width 75px, height 100px is inline CSS to specify the dimensions of the logo.
Next, we have the H1 tank, which shows the highest level heading. Normally, H1 elements are used for main titles, displaying the name of the site or the content in this case. Nav represents the defining a set of navigation links. Next, we have the UL class equals to Nav menu. This is an unordered list with a class nav menu to apply specific styles and denote the navigation items. We will then list the links in the navigation menu. Li represents a list item in the navigation menu. Ahref anchors element used for creating a hyperlink to link from one page to another. The href attribute specifies the URL of the page the link goes to. For the UL, it is the closing tag for the unordered list. Next, we have the slash NAV, which is the closing tag for the navigation. Then, we have the slash div, which is the closing tag for the div part. Next, we have this line which shows the link start with the class register link that directs to the register and login page. The slash header part shows that the header is now being closed. Now, let's see the footer. So the footer part here represents the footer section of the web page, typically containing authorship information, copyrights, and other legal notices. This next line here defines a paragraph containing text. Here, it is used for the copyright notice. As mentioned, to make it consistent throughout the portal, we have used styling elements defined by classes in the style.css style sheet. Let's just quickly view a sample of these styles definition in the style.css document. Let's take a sample definition for the header and see how we tried to achieve styling consistency across the portal. So for this container part, the width equals to 80% sets the width of the element to 80% of its parent container allowing for a consistent and centered look across different screens. For margin auto, this automatically adjusts the margin to equally space out the container in the center horizontally, useful for center aligning blocks within their parent elements. For overflow hidden, this property prevents any child elements from overflowing beyond the boundaries of this container. If any child element size exceeds the container, those parts will be hidden. Let's move on to the header class definitions. So for header, Background color teal sets the background color of the header to teal, which is the school's color. Color white sets the text color inside the header. Padding 10px, 20px adds space around the content inside the header. Position relative is the type of positioning method used for an element such as static, relative, absolute, fixed, or sticky. Display flex displays the container as a flexible box layout. Justify content aligns the items on the main axis horizontal axis and in this case, distributes any remaining space between and around the elements. For align item center, it aligns items on the cross axis in their center. Next is the header container class definitions. Display flex establishes a flexible container that makes it easier to design flexible responsive layout structures without using float positioning. It's used here to arrange child elements horizontally, like the logo, heading, and navigation menu. For align item center, it aligns the items vertically in the center within the container. 
This is particularly useful to align elements in the navigation bar or header where you want all items to be centered along the line weight, regardless of their individual sizes. The styling properties afforded by the starsheet is a powerful way of ensuring consistency throughout the portal. You then just have to copy and paste the same header and footer sections for all pages on the portal so that this consistency is thus achieved. In the next video, we will go into live coding of the carousel gallery function in the homepage. See you then.